If you're playing through the Risen series, you might find the combat in Risen 3 to be different than before, but to be fair, ever since Gothic 2, combat has changed in every game. This time around, I think Piranha Bytes did a pretty good job with the melee system, but it did take some time and practice to get good at it. So I'm making this video for those of you who, just like me, might be a little bit frustrated with the system, especially if you start playing on higher difficulties right off the bat. This video is going to be a basic melee guide where we'll talk about the difficulty settings, the combo mechanics, the importance of dodging, and why you should combine melee with both magic and ranged weapons, and some general tips and tricks that I picked up during my three playthroughs. Let's begin with the difference between difficulties, which are easy, medium, hard and ultra. Well, there are two main differences. The first and the least important one is that enemies deal more damage the higher you go up in difficulty, while the second one and more importantly, the enemies will give you a lot less time to react to their attacks. On easy, you should have absolutely no trouble dodging and evading enemy attacks, while on ultra, you have to time your dodges near perfectly and even then it may not be enough. The good news is that you can always change the difficulty from the gameplay options during your playthrough, so you should find what the sweet spot is for you. However, the most important thing to know is that difficulty in Risen 3 does not scale as you progress through the game. Regardless of difficulty, the game will be significantly harder to begin with and then it becomes a walk in the park at the end. Changing the difficulty will realistically only impact your early to mid game, so keep that in mind. I personally played only on Ultra and I will be explaining things from this perspective. Naturally, everything you see in this video can be used on any difficulty. Alright, so the main thing about the melee combat system is the attack chain. You can initially chain 3 attacks together, which not only deal more damage than the previous attack and stagger, but the final attack also knocks back enemies. Later on, you can learn a skill called Fencing Master, which increases your chain up to 4 hits. This is important because, again, attack staggers enemies, which keeps them at bay. Risen 3 is a prime subscriber to the idea that attack is the best defense, so learning how to perform this chain attack correctly is essential. To do this, you simply have to time your attacks and not spam left click. When you do it correctly, your sword will have a blue or white trail effect, and when you spam left click, you'll attack so slowly it's like chopping down a tree. Attack speed is the most important attribute in this game. Not only because you kill enemies faster, but because you don't give them as much time to react and you keep them staggered. You can increase your attack speed in three ways. First is by performing your chain attacks correctly. Second is by learning a skill called Blade Dancer. And third is a spell from the Demon Hunter class called Demon Blade. With all of these combined, only enemies which cannot be staggered will stand any chance against you. Enemies also work in the same way. They use this 3 hit system and the last hit will knock you down if you don't block it or dodge it. Do note they don't always perform all 3 hits. Sometimes they only do 1 or 2 but just like you they have a small break between the chains which is when you want to counter attack them. Alright, so for the majority of small monsters in the world, be those ghouls, rats, scavengers, hellhounds, jaguars, etc., it is enough to simply perform chain attacks back to back. Because the last hit in your chain always knocks them down, it will give you plenty of time to connect to another chain. When you knock something down, I recommend that you start with a heavy attack by holding left click. Heavy attacks, while being very powerful, they also leave you exposed, so it's best that you do them when the enemy can't respond. The difficulty only starts when you fight bigger creatures, which can either block your attacks or they don't get staggered as much. This is where dodging is important. Well, normally you try and parry the enemy's attacks, but they all have a way to break through it, so the only option is to dodge. 
The difficulty setting comes into play the most here. On Ultra difficulty, you need to time your dodges perfectly and know your enemy's attacks very well, which can be very frustrating, so I don't recommend it, especially for beginners. While on the easier difficulties, you can dodge backwards, sideways and do jumping jacks, because you have a lot of time to do it. On Ultra, there is one particular kind of dodge, which I found to be more useful, and that is diagonal forward dodge, or simply forward dodging. This not only puts you on the side of the enemy, so you can attack right away, but the majority of the enemies have some sort of forward lunging attack, which can normally gap close to you quite easily. We'll talk more about gap closing in a second. When you are on the side or at the back of the enemy, that confuses them a little bit, which typically gives you enough time to attack or to put some distance between you. After finishing a chain attack, it is also quite useful to roll back twice. This puts enough distance between you and the enemy, so they go into their approach the target subroutine instead of the kick your ass one. You will see that once you do this a few times, their attack patterns will become predictable to you. Apart from the big and scary monsters, there are also the humanoid ones. Against these guys you need to perform your chain correctly, and when you knock them down, follow up with a heavy attack and another chain. If you're lucky and they don't block you, you can easily kill them just like with the small monsters. The worst thing that these guys can do to you is break your block with a heavy attack of their own. There are two ways to deal with this, either you dodge or interrupt them. If you're going to dodge, make sure you don't do it too soon or they will gap close on you like a homing missile. Do note that humanoids always want to finish their 3 hit combo chains, so if the first attack is a heavy one and you dodge it, then for sure they will follow up with another 2 attacks, so be prepared. The best way is to interrupt them however. Here you have options, either you attack them with your melee, or with your secondary ranged weapon if you have invested into it and it doesn't miss that much, or better yet with magic. We haven't talked about secondaries yet, but they can be extremely powerful if you invest into them. Just like with firearms, critical damage is what makes them very good at bursting down enemies and of course the fact that they stagger. They're okay to be used between melee chains as to not give your opponents a chance to counterattack. however, they tend to be a little bit on the slow side, so I personally prefer magic instead. Magic is pretty much the core theme of this game and it works together with melee combat quite well. You don't need to invest into it, apart from acquiring spells and spell scrolls, to benefit from it in combat. All the attack spells have a stagger effect associated with them, some better than others, which can be used quite well to stop enemy heavy attacks, or between sword chains, or better yet, when you're getting overwhelmed and you need to stagger enemies to give you a window for attacking. Because you can't be staggered while casting, spells always go through. I highly recommend you watch my spell review video to learn more about the spells in Risen 3, link in the cards. Alright, so there is something I avoided talking about until now, and that is Repost, which is a counterattack skill. The reason for that is because you can make melee combat work without Repost as well, even if you don't invest into melee at all. But this skill changes things. It not only deals a good amount of damage, but most importantly, it stops the enemy attack chain completely and then staggers them so you can immediately follow up with a chain of your own. I mean, please, what more do you want? This works both against humanoids and monsters alike. It does take some practice, timing this correctly, but once you do, you have a very powerful tool. I highly recommend learning this skill early if you're serious about playing as a melee fighter. Next up, I think it's relevant that we talk about fighting alongside companions as well. If you're new to Piranha Bytes games and you don't know how the aggro mechanic works, by attacking something twice, whether by melee, ranged or magic, you take aggro, meaning 
that something will attack you instead of whatever else it was attacking before. So, if you have a monster attacking your companion, you want to let your companion hit it once, and then you hit it once as well. Rinse and repeat. If a monster is attacking you, you need to let your companion attack it twice, so they take aggro away from you. Obviously, when your companion is tanking, it is a prime time to use heavy attacks safely. All that being said, do not think of your companions as crutches, because they will undoubtedly let you down. It's nice and dandy when they help you, but sometimes they can go completely AFK and leave you to deal with whatever scary demon all by yourself. Patty's first instinct when she sees a big scary monster coming your way is to pick up her phone and order you a coffin. Finally, let's talk about gap closing and combat disengaging. Well, Piranha Bytes in all their brilliance realized that combat in Reason 2 was completely broken and you could cheese the entire game by rolling and heavy attacking or shooting in case of firearms. So what do? They introduced this gap closing mechanic as to prevent you from abusing rolling or combat disengaging willy nilly. So if you're trying to get away from an encounter and you have these Tokyo ghouls chasing you, well best not to run away like a damsel in distress because they will dash to you across the bloody map like it's nobody's business. Which is also why rolling backwards is sometimes a bad idea. The single best way to disengage from combat in Risen 3 is by using a parrot flight spell. Luckily there are plenty of these scrolls lying around, so make sure you always keep some handy. They are also useful if you want to switch aggro from you to your companion. So while Patty is ordering your coffin, you parrot up and say sorry Patty, no phone calls during business hours. Also as a final note, there are three categories of weapons, sword, slashing and piercing. They're the same and they do the same thing. It doesn't matter which type you choose, pick whichever one you think looks the coolest. Alright bros, that was it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you do leave a like, it would be super appreciated and I will personally introduce you to Polly's real daddy. That's right, you need Parrot Flight Scrolls and Polly's real daddy has got some. This is never a scam. Thanks for watching Brevs and have a great day.